ever found yourself here? Waiting for the privilege of paying just to get in? That's how people feel when they realize how much they've been paying for internet access. You, on the other hand, are no fool. You log on to the internet using net zero. It's fast, reliable, and it's totally free. You never pay a monthly fee. Ever, ever, ever. The Dial Up Chronicles. guys, welcome to the Dial-Up Chronicles. Uh, we're going to surf the web using Dial-Up today. And I've got my HP out and it's got a telephone jack. And I've made it to where it cannot connect to anything Wi-Fi. Um, it does have a Wi-Fi thing and it does have an Ethernet port, but we're just using the telephone jack today. So I have set up Juno Internet here. And if you go to my last video, I showed how you can get Juno dial-up internet today. And I'm gonna sign in. Oh, if it'll let me type, there we go. All right. And it should start connecting now. See, we hit the connect button and we're going to listen in. There it goes, it's dialing. See down here it says dialing. Please wait while you're being connected. All right, I think we're, I think we're on. And so my stuff should pop up. Here it goes. Oh, look at all this. What? Look at that, Juno Platinum. Click here to upgrade to Platinum. Only $9.95 per month, no banner ads. Okay, so this must be an old ad. Juno Turbo, click here. Surf up to five times faster through your existing phone jack. Okay. Let's see, a few minutes to load, but it did finally load up. It seems like the initial, whatever, the initial thing that we load up and look up here, it's saying to get net zero here as well make money click here get thirty dollars for every friend you refer to net zero and like i talked about in my last video net zero and juno have merged into something called untd so you're seeing advertisements for juno and um, net zero on their same thing now this is really interesting because i'm getting a different almost totally different kind of bar search bar similar but different than last time and i don't have the uh turbo and I guess that's because I'm not paying for it. Let's see how it works today. Let's just hit surprise me, just like we did last time. All right, and you can see it's saying waiting for Wibby.me. You asked for it. Okay, it's, it's loading, it's doing, but it is going a bit slower than I remember the last time. But it is moving. Okay, here we go. SimCity 2000 in Skirk. This page is under construction. Okay, here are the sections you can go to. Cheats, downloads, links. All right. What? Whoa. <laughs> you got some little background music here. Dang, that's pretty cool. Okay, downloads. Oh man. Okay. I'm gonna uh turn that down for a minute right now. 
All right. Please send in some SC2K and SCRC files by email. Version 1.2 update for Mac. Version 1.2 update for Win. Windows 3.1? What? Links? Uh, Game Castle's SC2K page used by SimCity 2000 Pit Stop. Turn home. Let's go back up. Let's try to. You see the cool Maxis background there? That's cool. This isn't too bad for all that it's trying to do with the music and the background and all this stuff. It didn't take too long. Especially since we don't have Turbo. We only have the regular. So let's go to Downloads. And version 1.2 update for Win. Let's see what happens when I click on that. Waiting for pipian.com. All right, this page can't be displayed. So we're going to get out of this for right now and go back to Wibby. To Wibby. Let's see if it takes a long time. You're my computer's fan, so it's chugging along. Really sad that I don't have the turbo. Okay, that wasn't too bad. That didn't take too long. Let's hit surprise me again. Let's see what we get. So guys, again, I'm surfing the web with dial-up. And I'm using my free Juno account that I started last week. And I just used my iPad for that. And you can watch the last video to see how I did that. And then um, I had already previously installed software on this computer for Juno. So I just used the password and the username that I had um, gotten. And, and now I'm surfing the web with dial-up. So anybody can do this. Monkey slash beta dot com. All right, it's loading. It's just it's taking its time. <clears throat> so this definitely is not as fast as last week, even though it is working pretty decently. But definitely not as well. So maybe I will end up subscribing so I can get that turbo back. The surreal thing, monkeyboy.com. All right, guys, well, we're back at YB. That last website didn't, didn't do too much for me, so we're going to hit surprise me again. You asked for it. Okay, this seems to be moving a bit quicker, this one. So I guess it depends on what the website's trying to do. Well, the you asked for it came up. <laughs> quickly let's see yeah we must not have the turbo this time <clears throat> so I guess I just got that the first time um, for whatever reason and now I'm not getting it this time it says in the search thing angelfire.com hauntings within Indiana this is indiana.angelfire.com. So something's happening. It's definitely working. It's just not quite as fast. There are numerous, there are a numerous of haunted places in Indiana. What? Trying to decipher which ones are really haunted is not easy. Most of the stories you hear about seem to be legends and local fol folklore. Stories passed down from one generation to the next. The stories are intriguing and sometimes rather scary, but you must remember that they may just be stories. Let us take a tour around Indiana and look at some of the haunted places. Ooh, a web demographic survey just came up. Interesting. 
Let's look, let's click on something else, see if something happens. Indiana Roads and Highways. Here we go. Roads and Highways of Indiana. The Indiana Department of Transportation is responsible for the establishment and classification of a state highway network, which includes interstate highways, U.S. highways, and state roads. There is no rule preventing the same numbering between state roads, U.S. routes, and interstate highways, although traditionally, blah, blah, blah. Get some text. And yeah, it's kind of going slow just to get the text out here. A list of interstate highways within Indiana. It is working. Business routes in Indiana. Interstate 65 used to have a business loop in Lebanon, Indiana. It is considered decommissioned. Lebanon is a popular place named for business loops. And here we go, it's coming. More text, more information about the roads and highways. Lots and lots and lots of text. Back to YB. It surprised me. Hmm. Okay, we've got a website. Looks like something about ham radio. Doesn't seem to be my language. Okay. Looks like that's all we get. Photo. Parent directory. GIF. Before six beers. After six beers. What is this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's probably the most interesting looking thing we've uh, found. I don't know. Oh my goodness, that is crazy. Okay, that's interesting. All right, let's go back. Okay. Surprise me. All right. Here it goes, a tribute to the most frightening S ever. The Screen Gems S logo. And I can't seem to. Here it goes. Screen Gems. The image you see on the above television screen may seem innocent enough and not scary at all. But too many of us who watched as small children in the mid-1960s to early 70s, it was the most frightening thing on TV. In extreme cases, it caused nightmares and prevented the viewing of programs that used the logo, which was shown after the closing credits. What is this? He says he was so scared of it, he was just stared at it. Go down. Yeah, shown on the above screen is the logo for Screen Gems, the television division of Columbia Pictures that was used from 1965 to 1974. It was shown after the closing credits of now classic Screen Gems programs from this period. You wished. I Dream of Genie, the Monkeys. The segment was accompanied by music that has been described as creepy. Click here to hear a WAV file. Let's see if we can make that work. Oh, so you need a Windows Media Player. Welcome to Windows Media Player. Well, recommended settings. Finish. Importing.
Okay. Here it comes. Connecting. And this is all through dial-up, free dial-up. SG-1. Okay. Buffering, 10% complete. Hmm. So again, the dial-up is, is still working. It just seems like I suppose it'd be working better if I was using, if I was subscribed to their $30 a month subscription. Which, I mean, if you're not paying for cable or paying for other streaming devices, then that's not too bad. Okay. <laughs> that was neat. Let's play it again. Not sure why that's so scary. That's interesting. Now that's not bad for doing all that with dial-up. In 1971, this music was shortened to only three notes before the tones. Click here to listen. Okay. Connecting. And while it's connecting, by this time I had outgrown my fear of the symbol, although the shortened version seemed less scary. Most feel it was the music that made it so dreadful. <laughs> Oh, there it goes, buffering. Okay. I was like, oh no, I messed it up. Buffering, 53% complete. 67% complete. Okay. That was amazing. Let's hear it one more time. Okay, interesting. Let's do this one more time. Go back to YB. Okay, that didn't take too long. Does it surprise me? Toastytech.com. Okay, that came up really fast and probably because It's just text, I guess. Well, this is interesting. America's most hated, most wanted list. Name William H. Gates III, alias is Bill Gates, Gator, Satan. Sex, if evil scum has gender, then male. Oh my goodness, age 666 years. Have you seen this man? He is wanted in 19 states for illegal software bundling and other abuse of monopoly power. If you see him, please call 1-800-555-4DOJ. Oh, that's funny. Okay, and it's still loading up. Bill wanted. So it is, it's working. Well, look at this, these young pictures of Bill Gates. <laughs> oh man, look at that. Or is that really? What? No way. This is a real police mugshot of Bill Gates from a 1977 traffic incident. What? Okay. Back to Internet Explorer is evil. I've been on this website before. Let's hit the home page. This is a cool site. Nathan's Toasty Technologies page. The Graphical User Interface Gallery. Explore the history and evolution of the graphical user interface in my GUI gallery. Internet Explorer is evil. That's what we're using right now, too. Okay. Let's, um... We're going to come back to this page on our next episode of Surfing the Web with Dial-Up. 
a graphical user interface gallery. Oh, there comes another thing I missed right there that was popping up. So yeah, last week when I went online, I guess they gave me a preview of the turbo when it was working. It seemed to be working much better. Juno tip, the advertisers you see in the Juno port help us keep Juno internet access free. Show your support by clicking some of their ads, okay. We'll have to come back to that. Uh-oh. Seems like I got frozen. There it goes. Welcome to my GUI gallery. On these pages, you will find many screenshots, shots of various de desktop, computer graphical user interfaces, and operating systems. Many different people have had different ideas of how a GUI should work, and these screenshots show how many show many of the more popular ones. Okay, cool. All right. Um, we're gonna we're gonna go back to this next week, and it seems like the the dial-up's working well with this website. So hopefully we can get some better usage out of this free dial-up next time playing with this website. Let's click on some of their ads. Let's see, Juno Turbo, click here. Let's see what happens. Waiting for my.juno.com. Okay. So guys, I will come right back to you and let you know if this works. Hey guys, I'm back. Look at this. It really, it did come up. It took about, it only took a few minutes and this has come up now. Juno, please sign in. Welcome back. Please enter your member ID and password in the fields below. Okay, let's see what happens. I do that. And we'll sign in. Uh, just let me X out of that. Okay, it says please sign in. Clicked it, right? Hmm. Okay, waiting for store.juno.com. Oh my goodness, this is interesting. Okay. This is all on dial-up. Whoa, there it goes. Internet access, dial-up. Oh, wow. I didn't expect this to work. That's neat. Oh, it is working. So, hmm, I just don't know if I need to get the accelerated. Wow, products and services. Okay. Let's, let's blow this up. So we want... Cool, it welcomes me. All right. That is neat that this is working. Okay. Let's see. We want the accelerated dial-up. Man, it's so cool to me. This is neat, because these, obviously these things up here, these were made. It's got to be old. Those those uh, advertisements up there. Welcome. Alright, here we go. They must have built this in a way where they knew people would be using dial-up to get this, so they made it to where it works easily, I guess. Internet service provider, affordable dial-up and DSL, accelerated dial-up. Looks like I might have hit a snag, guys, yeah. And we just got nothing. So this is what I kind of expected to happen, honestly. All right, that looks like that's all that's gonna happen there. So let's just get out of that. 
hostytech.com. That's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on that in my next video, I think. Let's click on this ad here, netzero.net. And again, NetZero and Juno are, for all purposes, you know, basically they're the same thing. NetZero, my NetZero personal. All right, guys, it, this did come up, NetZero. It says sign in, in email, my account, software. Um, oh, anyway, we're not going to. We'll play with that another time. Well, we shall um, do some more surfing next week. And maybe I'll get the uh, the Turbo. Maybe I'll subscribe at some point. And we'll try some different search engines too. We'll try Safari and Google Chrome at some point too. And just see how they work with dial-up. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dial-Up Chronicles.